Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to set up and use the Trezor Model T. So let's get started. So as I mentioned in a previous video, I was contacted by Trezor and they asked me if I was interested in doing a video on uh, their devices. So I told them that I was, and they were nice enough to send me some devices to test. So I figured it was the least I could do to uh, show you guys how to set up and use this device. Uh, pretty cool device, so let's get going. All right, so here's the uh, Trezor Model T. So we'll go ahead and uh, open this guy up and take a look at what's inside. All right, so it's pretty nice packaging here. this here. So it comes with a USB micro cable. Actually it looks like a USB-C connector. And you get a few uh, little stickers. You get four of these stickers, a uh, getting started guide, and a couple of uh, personal recovery seed sheets. So you're going to use these sheets to write down your recovery phrase. Trezor Model T uh, uses a 12-word recovery phrase. So they've given you a couple of sheets there to do that. All right, and there's the Trezor device. has a nice big screen on there. And a uh, factory seal here. And then this little item here looks like it's a sticky. So they're just telling us to make sure that the hologram seal is uh, intact here. Oh, okay, so this is a, uh, a dock, right? It's magnetic. So you could stick this on the wall or on your desk anywhere to just keep the device out of the way when you're not using it. So that's pretty cool. All right, and then the Get It Started guide just talks about uh, how it doesn't need a battery and how you'll just connect it to your PC with the cable and get started. All right, so let's remove the seal and get started here. Came off with a bit of difficulty. I'm going to need to clean this thing up a little. All right, so let's go through the uh, initial setup of our Trezor. So I'm on the Trezor homepage. We're just going to go over here to the wallet link. And it's going to ask us which wallet we're using. We're going to set up our Model T today, so I'll choose Model T. And it gives us a couple of warnings. Uh, talks about that factory seal, the holographic factory seal that we removed earlier. So uh, we did confirm that, so let's move on to the next step. All right, now this is beta software. This is one of their newer devices, so we are using beta software. All right, so let's continue here. All right, so they want us to connect our Trezor, so we'll switch over. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, when I started this video and opened the box, the cable that came with the device was a bit short. So I went out and got myself a uh, six foot uh, USB-C cable. Any USB-C cable will work with this device, uh, but I needed a little more slack in my cable. Now the cable that comes with it may work just fine for you if you have a laptop uh, or if you have a USB hub that you have handy, but in my case, I needed a longer cable, and so I just ordered uh, a standard USB-C cable to give myself a little more room to work. All right, now uh, I have my little setup here over to the side, and the cable that came with the device was not long enough, so I've gotten myself a uh, USB-C cable uh, from Amazon, of course, that uh, give, gives me the length I need for this demo. So we're going to connect the device. All right, we're going to get the Trezor screen here. All right, so we're at the welcome screen of the device. So let's uh, switch back over to the uh, screen. And they're asking us to go ahead and run the install firmware, so we'll take care of that. So I'm just going to click this button here, install firmware. You'll see that, and then we'll see uh, the screen over here. This is what we'll see on the Trezor. 
All right, and there's the uh, completion screen. You can see my camera there. And uh, it's going to want us to go back over here to the software. All right, in our case today, we're going to be creating a brand new wallet. So I'm going to click Create New. All right, and then we'll switch back over to our Trezor. So it's asking us if we want to create a new wallet. And, uh, you know, one of the main features of the Trezor Model T is the touchscreen. So it's wanting us to confirm uh, the creation of a new wallet. So I'm going to tap here. Pretty cool. All right, and it wants us to run the initial backup. Uh, this is where it's going to generate a 12 word recovery phrase. All right, so we're going to get out our little sheet and we're going to get ready to uh, write down our backup phrase. This is what we're going to see on the, the website interface. So uh, I'm just going to click create backup. It gives us a few warnings here and uh, Remember when you create your uh, backup seed that it contains all of the information in the wallet uh, from now until, uh, how do I describe this? It's going to create everything uh, at the address of this uh, key. So even when you add funds later, this backup will reflect everything that the wallet contains. So I know the wallet is empty at this point, but this backup phrase will allow you to restore the wallet to whatever state you put it in in the future. So if you add a bunch of cryptocurrencies to this wallet and you lose your device or it gets uh, damaged or destroyed, you will be able to restore using this backup phrase. And so will anyone else that has this backup phrase. You want to keep this safe from anyone but yourself. Uh, this is basically everything that is in the wallet. So treat this phrase with care. We don't want to save it on our computer anywhere. Uh, we don't want it to be digitally available to anyone. It needs to be written on this card and kept in a safe place. I hope I've made that clear. <laughs> all right, so uh, I'm going to click this little box here to say that I understand all of this and then continue. All right, and then we can switch back over to our device and here's what it says. Uh, it's going to confirm again with us. All right. All right, and there's our uh, first few words. Now note that these words are numbered. So we're going to write them down in the correct order, uh, in the correct space on the sheet. And when we're done with that, it wants us to swipe. So I'm going to swipe down, or up actually, and we'll go to the next number here. And then uh, the last step here, it says hold to confirm. So I'm going to hold down this button until I get this check mark. All right, now uh, this is going to confirm on the device that I have successfully written down these words. So I'm going to uh, put these aside. Uh, it wants us to type the fourth word. So um, I'm referring to my card as I type these words. So it's gonna be like the old cell phones where we you know, tap the button the number of times we need to get the letter we're after. So, uh, for example, if I'm looking for letter C, I'm going to tap the ABC key three times until the C appears. You'll notice that there are less letters available the further I get in the word. It's just eliminating the other possibilities. All right, and then when I get the word, I'm going to get that little check mark, and then I'll just tap the word. Now it wants a different word. It wants the twelfth word in this case. So I'm just going to check over on my card and type in the 12th word. All right. And then once I've done that, I'll confirm as well. All right. So it was happy with those two words. And now it's telling me that the pin is not set. So let's go back over to the screen and take a look here. It's telling me that I've uh, successfully backed up the device. So I'm going to choose continue. All right. And then it wants us to give a name to the device. This is a nice feature. It allows us to differentiate uh, between devices if we have more than one. 
rather than having to put a label or scratch something in the back uh, indicating which device it is, uh, it has a naming feature. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and name this device. And I'm not going to be too creative today. I'm just going to name it model T number one. Then I'll confirm that. All right. And then it wants us to confirm uh, an action on the device. So let's switch back over to the device. All right. And it wants me to confirm that name that I just chose. So I'm going to tap that check mark there. All right. So you can see it's uh, written the name down there on the device. Let's go back over here. It wants us to continue. And now it wants us to set the pin. So let's uh, switch back over and look at the, our device. We're gonna confirm. And then we'll just choose a pin on the touch screen. A pin that's meaningful for us, a pin that we'll remember. All right, and then uh, of course we need to re-enter that pin. And if uh, you successfully enter the pin twice, you'll see this screen. And then let's go back over and uh, the software is telling us that we've successfully entered the pin twice. So I'll hit continue. All right. And then it wants us to bookmark the browser telling me to use control D. Let's see if that works. Ah, uh, okay. So I hit control D and uh, it wants me to bookmark this. I'm just going to put it on the bookmarks bar for now. And then I'll put it in something a little more meaningful. So we'll hit done here. All right, and I've done that. Let's uh, continue. And then it wants us to sign up for their uh, email newsletter. I have already done that, so I'm not gonna do it again. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip this, but you would just put your email here and uh, hit continue. And we're done, all right. And so we're done with that and we can hit finish. And now we're ready to uh, put some cryptocurrency on here. So let's get started on that. All right, so we've done the initial setup of the device itself. And so now we want to put a little cryptocurrency in here. So uh, if you've never done this before and you don't have any Bitcoin of your own, uh, you'll probably need to go out and buy some. Now, if you already have a different type of wallet, you can transfer Bitcoin from that wallet as well. So, but I'm going to show you how to buy a little Bitcoin and put it in the Trezor wallet uh, the most uh, basic way uh, using a Coinbase account. So, uh, I'll show you how that goes. So, let's head over here to Coinbase and get ourselves signed in. All right, so once we're on Coinbase's website, uh, let's just go ahead and hit buy sell. We're going to buy a little Bitcoin. We'll start with that. So you can see that I've uh, chosen Bitcoin here and then uh, I'm going to choose debit because debit is an instantaneous purchase. All right. So I'll do about twenty five dollars worth of Bitcoin. I'll, I'll hit 30. All right. And then notice over here that I am getting a uh, merchant charge. Uh, that is the Coinbase merchant charge it has nothing to do with the Bitcoin network. That's just the fee they're charging for the convenience of using Coinbase. So I'll hit buy instantly and we'll confirm that. All right, and you'll notice that that uh, happened instantaneously. And so we can go over here to accounts and hit our Bitcoin wallet and see that there is a balance in our Bitcoin wallet on Coinbase. The trouble, the, the trouble with Coinbase is that when you purchase cryptocurrencies, uh, they are holding them for you. Uh, you do not control the private key. They are just uh, the custodians of your cryptocurrency, in this case, Bitcoin. So the best way to have and hold cryptocurrency of your own is to put that Bitcoin in your own wallet. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use our newly set up Trezor and as you can see, there's already a uh, Bitcoin account here. So we're just going to choose receive. Right. And it's going to show us the Bitcoin address of that wallet. Uh, if we click this green button here. All right. And then it wants us to check on the Trezor itself. So you'll notice that the device itself has that Bitcoin address on there. We want to confirm that this address on the device 
matches the one we're seeing on the screen. That's another fail safe here. And I can eyeball that pretty quickly. So I'm gonna hit the little plus button there to confirm on the touch screen. All right, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that into my clipboard. Now let's just go over here to Coinbase. We're gonna choose send, right? We're sending the Bitcoin from Coinbase to our Trezor. I'm gonna paste in the address of the Trezor there. I'm gonna go down to this field where it says amount. I'm just gonna click in there, and then I get a send max. Now the send max doesn't always work right on Coinbase. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click it, and it fills in the amount, but it uh, doesn't always figure that amount properly, so that sometimes when you hit continue, it'll tell you there's not enough in the wallet. And let's see, oh, it worked. So <laughs> all that was for nothing. Sometimes it tells you there's not enough, and you have to shave a little bit off that max. But in today's case, it worked just fine. Uh, there's no Coinbase fee to send it, but there will be a minor fee on the Bitcoin network of six cents. I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. So you'll need to enter your two-factor authentication. All right, and we'll hit confirm there. And it's on the way. So let's go back over to Trezor, kind of keep an eye on the account. And boom, the Bitcoin showed up right away so now we completely own this Bitcoin. The Bitcoin is now in the Trezor wallet and we're good to go. Uh, we've safely stored our Bitcoin on our Trezor. So if you have any questions about what I did, please throw them up in the comments. I will do my best to get them answered. There are some more advanced features of the Trezor, which uh, I'll probably talk about in some uh, later videos. And you can always check my live stream like to remind everyone that I have a live stream every Friday night, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Please join me for the live Q&A in LA. Uh, throw out any questions that you may have and I'll do my best to get them answered on the fly. Uh, or just come and join in the conversation and uh, have a good time. Look forward to seeing you there. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.